So there's the GoPro 13 here, and we have the GoPro 12 here. The GoPro 12 can be distinguished by all the blue speckles. So they look about the same, same size, kind of same overall shape. Three mics. Um, still got the same fingers and quarter inch hole on the bottom, same size screens. I guess the biggest a visible difference, lack of speckles. And we have these grill things here. At first I thought, or everyone thought that they had something to do with cooling, but there's nothing on the website that mentions any cooling difference, and I don't think they do either. They're not aggressive enough. The uh, smaller version of this uh, GoPro has even more of them, but I don't even think all of those uh, grills mean anything. I think it's just cosmetic. And all the tests that I've done with overheating is, um, it behaves the same with overheating as a um, GoPro 12. So not much new there, you know. I have no problems with the GoPro overheating because um, usually I'm shooting 1080p 30 or 60. There's no overheating there. Or I'll shoot 1080p 24. Usually no overheating there. Usually you get, you know, overheating with, uh, you get overheating more with 4K P30 and 4K P60 or anything with the uh, 5.3K or anything with the 8.7 aspect ratio or maybe even the 4.3. Um, definitely shooting indoors where there's no airflow around the camera, that'll give you trouble. But if you get a little airflow around the camera, and you're shooting anything 1080 or 4K P24, you're usually okay. I use it mainly for vlogging, so I don't know. It kind of depends. And then, of course, if you're shooting high bit rate, 10 bit, that'll cause more problems. But uh, anyways, the grills aren't going to help you much. I guess um, the other big thing is they change the battery. It looks about the same as the, uh, virtually the same size and everything as uh, the old battery. But um, I don't notice a lot of difference in the capacity. It's minimal. I'm not sure if it was a good idea to change the battery if the difference was minimal because it's not backwards compatible. But I guess it was probably a monetary decision. They thought that, I don't know, it would somehow make more money for the company, I guess. But Sony has done this as well, where they've changed batteries, especially in their, uh, they've changed batteries that they've made a significant jump in capacity, so it was worth it. This one, I'm not sure if it was worth it. The DJI and the Insta360 action cameras also changed their batteries. They increased the capacity, but they didn't. It's backwards compatible, which would have been the way for GoPro to go, but they didn't. But moving right along, and uh, the macro lens mod had potential for vlogging because you could, but you know, use it for focusing closer to your face and have your face sharper and in the background softer, which I would have liked. But it's manual focus, which means it would be extremely difficult to do that because you'd be looking at the small front screen, twisting the manual focus macro lens, trying to figure out what's sharp and what's not. And then if you were trying to switch the camera to the front, shoot frontwards, backwards, frontwards, backwards, 
I don't even know if that macro lens mod would shoot frontwards. Like, I don't know where the focal plane would lie. Anyways, it sucks because it's a manual focus and you can't set it and preset it. And it needs a preset. It, but basically what you need is a macro lens mod that has autofocus. Basically what you need is autofocus for vlogging. But they don't want to do that. If you had autofocus, you basically wouldn't need a macro lens mod. Like when you think about it, I mean, just put mount, just put autofocus in the camera with a preset for set to infinity if you want to lock it. However, I'm not an engineer. Now the uh, ultra wide sucks because we don't need a wider lens. We need a narrower lens for vlogging. We don't need. We have a. This is about with linear. This is about 16 millimeter full frame equivalent. With linear stabilization um, I, or field of view, we need something narrower, more like 20 to 22 millimeters field of view for vlogging, not wider. So the ultra wide sucks. Then we have the anamorphic. It's big. It's gonna be heavier. It sounds interesting. It's not out yet, but it's gonna be wide. So just the whole package of it being so much. All of these lens accessories mean the camera gets bigger, heavier, and more fragile because that anamorphic lens like looks like it's going to be easy to scratch or break. So yeah, for vlogging, I don't think any of the lenses are any good. Now there is a magnetic latch mount. You can put it on the bottom here. I don't have it, but it seems like a good idea. It means you could uh, attach things to like this really fast. This is a GoPro grip here. And uh, yeah, you can just bang. That would be a great idea. Magnetic latch mount, good idea. And what else do they have here? Oh yeah, my favorite thing. The mag contactable magnetic door. That's a great idea. It lets you just like put a new door on and then you um, magnetically attach the power cable, passes p power to the battery through the door and you could just leave it. Like it'd be great for like passive vlogging where you're live streaming or just talking to the camera for a long time. You just set it and forget it and away you go. And if your camera fell off the tripod and hit the floor, it's okay. There's no cables, nothing to bust off inside your camera. Magnetic cable would just bounce off. So that's a great idea. It's, it's a waterproof, dustproof. So that's cool. I think that's a great idea. I think that uh, DJI and uh, Insta360 should have one of these things. So yes, turning the camera on one of the uh, best improvements in the GoPro 13 is the responsiveness, responsiveness of the screen. It's very responsive now. It wasn't before. You had to tap things and tap things and tap them again, but now it just seems to be um, like a real normal touchscreen, which is good. So that is a very nice improvement and what else did they do here inside the camera um they moved some stuff from like it there was a setting back in here in the preferences there's a whole bunch of stuff in there but they moved some stuff up front and what they moved up front was audio levels Audio levels are now here on this main screen. Okay, what is it called? I guess it's just this thing here. Anyways, I call it the main screen. 
but it's like it's got uh, raw audio, audio tuning, uh, wind reduction, and media mod. So this is all on your main screen, which is nice. Very nice. We'll talk more about audio tuning, voice versus standard. This one here, the wind reduction, is where I've noticed the biggest improvement. The voice isolation in this is much better now. Like I'm impressed with it. When I'm outside, I keep that wind reduction on a lot because it helps a lot. Not so much indoors, but outdoors it does. So we also have this now. This thing's called Denoise. Denoise low and Denoise high. What's this? Medium. I keep it on Denoise low, but it's nice to have it. The, um, the 12 never had it. Uh, it was just like it automatically added noise reduction. It's luminance noise reduction wherever it wanted to. And it mainly added it on the uh, 1080 um, video formats. And I think the 4K P24 got it, maybe. I know the 4K P60 never got it. 5.3K never. Anyways, it's manual now. And I think it's an improvement. Um, very much so. Bitrate is now up front here on the ProTune. ProTune settings. So it's all, it's all on the main, on the main um, scroll. So having that bit depth, that's great. So that's, you know, ergonomically. And then what else is in here? Oh yeah, this HLG HDR. Yeah, I'll show you some samples of the HLG HDR later, but um, it's interesting. It's supposed to be a real HDR, not a, I don't know, look-alike HDR. Supposedly the HDR before wasn't HDR, it was just sort of an HDR. But this HDR is the real deal. I don't like it, but I don't like it because it's bad for skin tones. But for landscapes or cityscapes, it's fine. And then we have the log. That's not new, but uh, still too hard to correct, still too difficult to use because I downloaded the GP LUT from the uh, GoPro website. It sucks. This log is harder to correct than the Apple log, and the Apple log is hard. So I just keep it on standard. Yeah, and so that's the main differences. Not a huge upgrade over the 12. You probably would be fine by just getting the 12 if you wanted to save some money. But this one's just a little bit easier. The screen's easier to handle. I mean, I guess if you hadn't bought a GoPro before, you're getting a new one. Yeah, get the 13. So now let's take a look at some footage from the GoPro 12 versus the GoPro 13. I shot just a bunch of test footage just to compare them both. And this is what I found. So the deal is that uh, they kind of look very similar. The GoPro 12 was a little bit darker in this shot, but not really. Um, this one of me, I guess, is pretty much similar. I didn't adjust anything. This one's kind of a walking shot, just to see how they handle um, shadow and light. This is the GoPro 13. Stabilization is all linear and uh, hyper smooth. Um, they look pretty similar. I didn't do them side by side because I don't really like 
it's just hard to get an idea of what they look like when you do them side by side because they only get half of a screen. So yeah, it's kind of hard to tell the diff, you know. They look super similar. Stabilization's good. I mean, I shot them 1080p60 because that's what I usually shoot. It's kind of my new norm. If I want to up-res it to 4K, I do. It's just easier. Less overheating issues. Better run times. If you didn't know they were different cameras, you'd have a hard time telling the diff. So, that is the um, tests with the uh, visual look. I felt that the voice isolation software on the GoPro 12 wasn't that good. So I retested this one, and um, I felt that the voice isolation software was better this time around. Especially, like, not so much the audio tuning standard versus voice. Voice, not so good. With the with the, with the audio tuning, keep it on standard. But I found with the wind reduction, when you're outside, keep that on, because that can help. When you're indoors, put the wind reduction to off, because it's quiet, you don't need it, and it kind of has a little bit of a weird sound. But outside, you can't hear the weirdness as much, and it really does help to address the wind noise, as you will see in these tests. And this is with the wind reduction off, wind reduction off, wind reduction off. Standard with wind reduction off, standard with wind reduction off, standard with wind reduction off. This is with the wind reduction on, standard wind reduction on, it's really windy. Super windy, super windy. Super windy with wind reduction on, super windy. Okay, we have the media mod on and uh, front, set to front, media mod on, set to front, and it's same high wind as usual, and uh, everything else is same as before. So I also did an HLG HDR test versus 709. I uh, didn't really like the HLG because it does weird things to skin. And since I'm vlogging a lot, skin and skin tones are a big deal. So this is your GoPro 13 with the HL GHDR. Notice the shadows on the left. The shadows on the left of that tree where those geese are, are kind of key because the HLG really opens up the shadows nicely. It's got a nice little balance going on there. That looks nice. Now this is just the GoPro 13 with the Rec 709. This is just standard. The colors are very similar, not quite as saturated, which I prefer. But when you pan over to that tree, notice how the shadows stay pretty dark. Looks more realistic, though. So you're just going to shoot landscapes and stuff. Yeah, maybe the HLG HDR. It's going to be trickier to process the HLG, though. You should put it in that uh, special, like I use Final Cut, so you have to put it into a... Uh, Final Cut will prompt you and ask you which kind of a timeline you want to put it into and I would say don't process it in the 709 timeline um, process it in an HDR timeline because it uh, you can massage the colors better and it just um, it's easier to handle it but there's just HLG is just more work it's 10 bit the colors are better but okay if you're just shooting landscapes and, and cityscapes and stuff and there wasn't a lot of people and skin tones, okay, fine. But at the end of the day, it comes down to story and character. If you've got no story and you've got no character, yeah, HLG is not going to save you. Okay, now we're going to do a night test because I felt that that was a big weakness of the GoPro. So. It would be a good idea to see if there was any changes there. So what we did was I just went out to a street that I thought was, you know, 
your average lit street, not too dark, not too bright, kind of just middle of the road. And I shot the GoPro 13 first, 4KP24, 48 shutter. You need the 48 shutter because there's, it's a static shot and you don't want there to be any vibration from the EIS because you're only at 48th of a shutter. You know, I mean, when you get down to 24 shutter, which you could go to technically, your hand might shake, but generally you can hold, hand hold a 48th of a second. And there's your 12. It's got more NR and, uh, I don't know. I mean, they're very close though. I mean, it's not like it's a huge difference, but I thought maybe the uh, 13 was a little bit better. The low denoise, being able to put that denoise down, I think helps with the softness, just makes it a bit more sharper. Medium sharpness is the best for both of them. High bit rate, of course. Wouldn't go any higher than 400 ISO. 400 ISO is the max for these little sensors. Yeah, but so that is my uh, low light test. And uh, what else did I do? So anyways, I shot this protest at night and um, I'm just walking here and I'm walking at 1080p 60 so the shutter is going to go no lower than 60. That's why I've got the EV at 1.5. So that's walking at 60 shutter. It's not good, but it's not terrible. As you can see, it's doable to shoot these night shots. I didn't make any adjustments to this. But again, there's a nice pool of light here. You know, you got to pick your shots. I mean, it worked here but again it's an action camera and really at night you can only do static shots which kind of sucks you know it's like when you buy an action camera you kind of want to do action you want to move but moving with the gopro in low light is not a good idea ideally you want to have that shutter up around 240 that's where the electronic image station, image stabilization kicks in. That's where it does its job the best. Anything else and you're best with static shots. So yeah, that is the difference between the GoPro 12 and the 13. Is it significant? No. The accessories are kind of cool, especially that Contacto magnetic door thing. That's cool. The quick release. That's cool. Um, the screen and the responsiveness, the touch screen, that's better. If you're buying a new action camera, sure, get the GoPro 13. No question. Also, if you want to shoot in bright light and you value skin tones, I would say the GoPro still has really, really good skin tones. I have not owned the DJI Action 4 or 5, and I haven't owned the Insta360 Ace Pro 1 or 2, but from, while, from what I can see, I still, and all, all the things I read on the net and all the things I've heard, those two cameras still struggle with accurate on a white balance, especially for people. So yeah, I think GoPro still has really solid color science, which is good for vlogging. All I would like them to do now is to maybe add autofocus, set the aperture to F2 or maybe 1.8, and then make the lens a little less wide, like getting into that 20 millimeter to 22 millimeter field of view, full frame equivalency. That would be perfect for vlogging, but I don't think they're going to do it. So that's kind of why I'm starting to entertain ideas like the camera that I'm shooting now. 
I bought this uh, Samsung Flip 6 and it's kind of like your Samsung S24. It's kind of got the same camera in there, except it's a flip. So you can use the uh, main camera and shoot yourself using the cover screen. I'm just hand holding it right now. Got the lav mic on. I don't know. I might get rid of my GoPro 12. I think I'll hang on to the 13 for a while, but I'm starting to kind of like fall out of l I love the form factor of the action cam. It's just that lens, it's just too wide. Like this form factor is brilliant, but it needs a bigger screen on the front like this flip six has this is like the minimum you need and then it needs it's just too wide of a lens i think for vlogging but you know what at the end of the day it's i don't know it's just user preference what are you into what do you want and here's the bad thing i hate having to buy all these cameras but really, you have to buy these cameras and live with them for a while in order for you to find out if you like them. You really do. You can't just... It's hard to just watch a uh, YouTube video and then make a decision. Unfortunately, you have to buy them and live with them. And you waste a lot of money, but it's really the only way to do the proper testing. But I'm finding now for active vlogging, for passive vlogging, and just for just the look. The Samsung Flip 6 is starting to appeal to me. Just because it's more oriented for vlogging rather than flat out action. Shoots better in low light. I don't know. We'll see though. I tend to do a lot of like talking about making videos rather than actually making videos like I, which is kind of a a problem it's like a gear acquisition syndrome related problem where you like the gadgets but you don't really do anything with the gadgets except complain about them so yeah 